All right, so before we really dive into order of operations, which um, as many of you know, is PEMDAS, right? And I'll talk a little more about that later. We want to talk about how to evaluate exponents because exponents are one of the, the first things we do with order of operations and uh, we need to make sure we're secure on that. So let's take a look at uh, some problems involving exponents and make sure you're good on this. So remember an exponent, the way it's written is this six to the third power, that's how you would say it, or six to the power of three, um, or you could say six cubed, right? Is the same thing, it's an equivalent expression as saying six times six times six. So the base is the item that's getting repeatedly multiplied, and then this basically tells you how many times you're multiplying it, right? So this is saying let's multiply six three times, and then you get six to the third power, and then you're in good shape. So if we do that, we go six times six, you get 36, and then you do 36 times six, and three, and I think you get 216. 216, so that would be six to the third power. If we did negative two to the fifth power, that would be the same thing as saying we're gonna multiply negative two, and I put the parentheses around it to preserve that negative sign each time, right? So it means you multiply negative two five times, right? My stylus is kind of freaking out. So negative two times negative two gives me positive four. We have another negative two times another negative two that gives you another positive four. Positive four times positive four gives me 16. And then if I multiply that by this last negative two, I get negative 32. Another way to look at it when you have a negative number and you're raising it to an exponent is if it's an even exponent, you're gonna have a positive answer. And if it's an odd exponent, you're gonna have a negative because each set of two um, negatives makes a positive because of the way our integer rules work with multiplication and uh, negative signs, right? So line up negative 32 for this one. Let's look at, look at another one. And you can see I said insert fraction with exponent here and I will in a minute. So if I have the problem seven minus three and I'm raising that whole thing to the second power, that just means that I'm gonna do what's in there and then we're gonna raise that to the second power. So seven minus three is four. So I simplified what's inside the parentheses and I raised that to the second power and four squared is 16, all right? And then let's suppose we have, I don't know what just happened there. Suppose we have, um, let's say we have two sevenths and we're raising this whole thing to the third power, okay? So what this means when you have um, fractions, right, is that it's you're multiplying the entire fraction, you know, three times. Sorry, my, uh, my stylus is really just not cooperating right now. So we have two sevenths times two sevenths times two sevenths, three times. Another way you can look at this though is you can rewrite this as two to the third power over seven to the third power. Because if you look at this, right, you're just gonna multiply those all together and you're gonna multiply all these together. So there's no reason we can't break that apart while it's in there and represent it like this. Okay, so two to the third power is two times itself three times, which is eight. Seven to the third power is 49 times seven, which I think is, it's like 300 and something three. No, let's, let's see what it is, all right? Six, 28 plus six, so it's 343. So eight over 343 is our answer. So. When you're doing problems like this, just big thing is um, go slowly. Make sure you're um, you're notating everything properly and got all your ducks in a row and all that. So, okay, um, I think at this point you are ready to move on to try some problems.